Welcome back to Judgment Decision Making. I'm Dr. Padilla. Now we're going to talk about expected utility theory versus prospect theory. Now, both of these theories are really interested in understanding the rules that govern people's choices between simple gambles. And the reason they're focused on these simple gambles is it is a way to understand how we make choices in a controlled fashion. Our choices are so complex in the world and there's so many things that go into them. If we can look at these very small, simple tasks, they give us some insights on how we make decisions in more complex contexts. Context. So I'm going to show you some simple gambles and how what we learn about those simple gambles will inform how we make decisions in the real world. Now, rational choice and expected utility theory focus on the assumption that logic describes how we should make decisions, meaning that generally there is a mathematically correct answer to most decisions. And if we are truly rational, we should be able to come to the mathematically correct answer, just like a robot, just like a machine. And um, these types of theories were founded by individuals in mathematics and economics, and they have a perspective that doesn't include how humans actually make choices. Now, in contrast, there's prospect theory, which was proposed by Daniel Kahneman and Amos Traversky, and it suggests that how humans actually make risky choices without assuming anything about their rationality. Essentially, these individuals were psychologists and knew that there are so many things that influence our decisions, emotions and priming. We've talked about so many other heuristics. And when they originally formed prospect theory, they didn't you know, understand the implications <laughs> of all of those um, different types of emotional decision-making components. But it later went on to prove to be incredibly informative and influential, even in economics, and it founded the the field of behavioral economics. And Amos, or I'm sorry, Daniel Kahneman, he ended up winning a Nobel Prize for this work because it was so influential. To think about how humans make decisions and how their emotions influence those types of economic decisions. Now, prospect theory, like I said, involves emotion influencing our decisions with uncertainty. And there's three components that I'll talk about today. First is loss aversion. This is where losses loom larger than gains in our mind. I'm going to present you with a scenario that I'll walk you through. Let's imagine that you have money invested in two stocks, A and B. You currently own 1,000 shares of each stock. And you can see some information about the stocks in these tables here. Now, both stocks currently sell for the same price of $15 a share meaning that if you sold these stocks today, either A or B, you would get $15,000. They're worth the same amount today. And your financial advisor tells you that while stock B is trading lower than when you purchased it, notice that stock B you purchased for $20 a share, and now it's down to $15 a share. Um, she believes that it will grow at the same rate as stock A through 2025. This is her prediction for 2025. Both stocks will be valued at $25 a share. So that's to say that right now at this moment, they are the same value and their value is expected to increase at the same rate in the future. After 2025, she believes that both stocks will perform at average market rates. Okay, so the question for you is, say you want to sell your stock and buy a car. And you don't have to worry about taxes in this scenario. Which stock do you sell? Do you sell stock A or do you sell stock B? I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to make this decision. I want you to look at the other details in the table as you're thinking about it. Okay, begin.
All right. 30 seconds feels like a long time when you're watching a video. And when I do this in class and I say, you're gonna have 30 seconds to make this decision, students usually panic a little bit, but it's, it's quite a lengthy time to make this type of judgment here. Okay, so let's start about with some predictions from rational choice and expected utility theory. What the prediction would be if this type of theory was correct is that 50% of the time people would sell stock A and 50% people would sell stock B. They are equivalent in price right now. You get $15,000 no matter which one you sell. So it's really a coin flip which one you should be selling in the terms of expected utility theory. In contrast, prospect theory would suggest that the majority of people would sell A because of loss aversion. If we look back at the, the stock table, notice that for stock A, there is gains. You gain $5,000. And stock B, you actually have lost $5,000. And I would predict that you chose A as well. And the reason why is that it feels better to sell a stock after you have gained $5,000 than to sell a stock that has lost $5,000. But they are the same. At this point, they are both worth $15,000. So it shouldn't matter which stock you sell. But it feels better to sell for a gain rather than a loss. And this is the foundational component of loss aversion. It feels bad to lose, even if you're kind of in the same place as before, or if the other option is, you know, equally mathematically the same, it just feels bad to lose money. And this is really what prospect theory describes, is it creates a theory that directly quantifies that feeling of loss in addition to sort of a mathematical calculation that we do. Okay, let's talk about the next component, which is evaluations are relative um, to your current reference point. Okay, let's consider two people. We have Jack here and Jill. Today, Jack has $5 million. He's pretty rich. And Jill has $5 million. Great. Question is, are they equally happy? If you were to see this information, you would say, yes, of course, they're equally happy. They both have $5 million. That's fantastic, really. What if I told you that yesterday, Jack had 1 million and yesterday, Jill had 9 million? That's pretty clear that Jill would be pretty unhappy and Jack would be very happy, right? But today they still have the same amount of money. So mathematically they are equivalent, but from an emotional standpoint, there are clear differences here. So this is to say that evaluation is relative. We don't think about how much we have at this moment in isolation. We compare it to how much we had in the past. And that comparison makes up how we feel about how we're doing today. People's choices are based not on dollar values, but on psychological values of the outcome, how our psychological system feels about the, the situation we're in. The happiness that Jack and Jill experience is determined by the recent change in their wealth relative to the different states of wealth. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about in this lecture set is diminishing sensitivity, which is the focus on ratios rather than absolute values. Okay, so let's take a, a scenario here where we are increasing our income, or let's say we, we have $50 and we are able to increase it to $100. Now let's look at a scenario where we have $350 and we increase it to $400. Which one feels better to you in this case? Probably the first one, right? We're essentially doubling our money. We have a massive increase compared to the one at the bottom. But the relative or the absolute increase is just $50. We're gaining $50 in either case, but it feels better when it is a larger relative amount that we're increasing rather than a smaller relative amount. If we look at it a different way, let's say you lose $50 out of 100 or you lose $50 out of 400, which one feels worse, right? The 
the first one is going to feel worse because you're losing, you know, a larger proportion. The ratio of the money that you're losing is larger. So it feels worse, even though the absolute loss is absolute is exactly the same. <laughs> Summary here. Prospect theory really describes how emotions influence our judgments with uncertainty. And today we talked about loss aversion, which is how losses loom larger than gains and how our evaluations are relative to our current point of reference. We're comparing back to former to our current. And then there's diminishing sensitivity, which is the focus on ratios rather than absolute values. Thank you.